action. Kanye West is the greatest artist of all time. The greatest? The greatest. Oh my goodness, bro. There's a lot of artists. Think we got Michael Jackson. We got goddamn Stevie Wonders. We got great composers. Uh, who, who's the who's the guy who's a uh, uh, likes the boys and he's a very talented person? What <laughs> the, the, the the old school gentleman who likes boys? Little Richard? No, he's great too. <laughs> he worked with Michael Jackson. He's a Quincy super, Jones. Quincy. He got one of them names. You too. made it. You Quincy, made it me. Quincy you got a sweet name. That. Hey. Kanye West is the greatest artist of all time because there's layers to Kanye West. Everything is just kind of like a layer. So there is the, of course, the producer. There's a rapper. There's just the overall orchestrator of the music of putting it all together. And he's making clothes. He's making. He has film ideas. I don't that like all your hot take. Together. That's my hot take. <laughs> <laughs> we have the same hot take. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. Hey, he's triple, the greatest th- artist. Double pause. I'm not man, but Kanye is amazing. It feels like I'm just yeah. deriding everything, but he's. What he's been able to do from the music industry to the clothing industry. I wanted Kanye West to be the president. You asked me, you said that I really want Kanye West. Yeah. Man, my I was I looking Kanye forward to president. Kanye 2024. I was like, every public school is gonna have Yeezy outfits. What's your favorite Kanye West album and why? My favorite Kanye West album and why. Man, every single album he drops is so progressive. The sound completely changes. Most artists that their life isn't accurately reflected in their life. Like Drake. He's still making music that he was making 10 years ago. Girls and, and partying. Girls and partying. You know, Future's still doing the exact same thing, too. You don't actually... Future see, hard. Man, he's fantastic at what he's doing. He's like the best rebounder in the history of basketball, right? Yeah, that's a good, that's I'm a just, good look. That's, that's what yeah. I feel about Future. In his pocket, there's no one better than Future in his pocket. Have you heard Certified Lover Boy by Drake? Yes, of course. I think that Certified Lover Boy is a classic. I think wow. it's a classic album. I think the Certified Lover Boy is a classic album. It could potentially be one of the best Drake albums ever. But I don't even think Drake has a classic album. He got some. He got <laughs> what? Take care hey, uh, by sales and all this stuff. Oh, yeah, I mean, let me let me go look at the classic. But with sales, Drake is always sales and listens and spins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. America and the world is very simple. If you can capture the woman, then you have an audience forever because they're the greatest consumers in the history I, I of the think world. I think it's deeper than that, though. Like, Do look, you really? When I give Drake, listen, if you follow me on Facebook, you you may take me as a Drake stan. I'm not a stan for these people. I listen to their music. I give great analysis of it, and I tell you why it's great. There's a reason why records sell the way they sell. This is not just, oh, it's a, their plants. No. Music has to resonate in such a way to sell at a large scale, even if you include the box. Hold on, hold on a minute. I'm going to push back a little bit. <laughs> Go ahead. I've, I've heard independent artists say that it requires $150,000 to break a record. You could put $150,000 on a, a record that isn't good and it don't do nothing, but it still gets numbers. Level. I just mean That's entry, entry level. level. But in order for a record to go, okay. It's like anything, like if you're in the stock market, you want to put money on something that you think is going to go. So let's say I put $250,000 on a song that's medium. It's probably going to do medium. Even a wax song can do medium. But if I have a certified hit and I put money on that on that song, a good promotion is going to go. When I heard outside, when I heard it for the first time in the studio, like when OG Bobby Williams played that song, I knew before even Mo3 got on it, I said, that's a hit. That is a hit. I told him, hey, that's, that, that's a hit. They make some things hits though. When you when it play, when it, it used to be on the radio when the radio was a thing. Even right now on playlists, I, I was trying to get. I, I put in Kendrick, and all I got was the Kendrick uh, diss songs over and over and over again on repeat. That means that the, the algorithm is saying continue to push this. And when I say the algorithm, someone paid some bots to just play these songs continuously. For example, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know the answer to this question. When was the last time an independent artist won a Grammy? Outside of the category, I mean, by being the artist of the year, when was the last time an independent artist won the best artist of the but year? But you want to know something about that? What's up? The voters are artists. Like, there's all musicians. So that's the other thing. Like, you also have to take into account that this is just me breaking down the science of the Grammys because I'm not a Grammy fan. But you have to be a member. So there are several members. You know, the nominations are obviously going to come from, you know, major songs that are out. So it may be hard to see an independent, like, Larry June is one of my favorite artists right now. Like he's independent. Larry June is probably the person I listen to the most. But it's gonna be hard Man, to let's see. Let's cut to the chase. You not, you're telling me the Grammys aren't based on money and politics? Uh, not as much as people think. Man, if you ain't if you don't pay for the record, well, you ain't, okay. You ain't, the record ain't gonna be the thing. If we want to look at it like that, yeah, and you do have to get you have to gain membership. You have to gain membership into 
their community. They know behind the scenes. Like, man, they... Why Drake don't got more Grammys than Kendrick? Big artists be like, man, I'm not even finna come to your award show if I'm not getting the award. And so if you need Beyonce to show up, you're gonna give her a nod in the background. It's say, some influence. B, you want it. Cause I want, I need you to come and I'm gonna, you gonna make the event. It's some influence, but then sometimes they just be doing shit. Like it's like, like again, okay, Kendrick has all these Grammys. Now some of, okay, Good Kid, Mad City. I said this greatest hip hop album ever, but like I do think To Pimp a Butterfly is really good, but to be as renowned as, as it is and compared to other projects, it's like I don't necessarily agree with that. Good Kid, Mad City, however, I do. I totally understand. I'm looking at a record to see is it transcending time? Is it is how wide of a range does a record have when I'm saying that's a great Man, album? If you don't get the backing of these big companies, you don't get the push that needs to for you to even know there's a good kid in Mad City. Kendrick Lamar might be the biggest industry plant in the history of the of the rap industry, period. Hey, for some reason, Drake said, Yes, you can come on and, and be on stage with me. For some reason. He made that decision, well, Drake. And, and for some reason, someone put that man in the room to even have that opportunity. I'm just saying, someone pressed go on Kendrick Lamar. And did he go? Hell yeah, he went. You got to have talent when they say go, and he's going. How you going to beef with the dude that helped you out, though? That's what I don't understand. That's I, weak. I even heard somebody say, uh, I guess, Glasses Malone, whatever. He was like, I told you wasn't going to like Drake, man. He ain't, uh, he none of the culture. He none like us. He none of the culture. Like, y'all niggas sound real lame. Nigga, do it, do it. Is really the music wanted, good or not? Oh, that. And that of the culture thing. And so I have to like, you guys get to be having millions of dollars and you still think that you have to dress like the people that live in the place that you come from. It's a very interesting dynamic, man. Well, Kendrick Lamar be dressing funny too. He be wearing like little <laughs> weird bell bottoms and These are just and... powerful people with dough. Yeah, man. And but... so, so you asked me what was my favorite. Uh, like right now, I can't stop listening to Vultures too. I think it's fantastic. Where he at in his where he's at in his life, that's where I'm at in my life. I'm divorced. I'm trying to co-parent to see my children. That's where I'm at. And that's how the music sounds. Right. But right now, once Kanye got free, his music sounds very free. And he's just flowing and it's just melodic and it's and it's soulful and it's passionate. But since he went against the grain of black culture, then we ain't supporting him. That makes me angry, man. We're not supporting the greatest artist of all time. Because he said things that offended us. He said, he said, uh, Jay-Z's not the leader. Beyonce's not the leader. I'm the leader. He said, Diddy's not the leader. Man, when he, his, when he had that rant, he said, they have stuff on you. He said, they got stuff on y'all. That's why y'all can't be free. That's why y'all signed those deals, because they own So you don't think they got anything on him? It seemed like they don't, because he really do talk the way he want to talk. When If they had anything on him, we they would, it. man, they took eight. Since they didn't have no dirt, they took his money. <laughs> took his money, dog. They'll take your money. He said, I, I spent $8 billion to burn my chains. But you know what's funny? It seemed like they did take the money for some time, but he came back a billionaire. When he, He's on tour in Asia right now. I think he, he's been in Korea. He's wearing it out, and he's getting all that money back. His stadium tours. Yeah. He... he you design your life the way you want it to be, right? Like right now in my life, I can see the car. I can see the house. I can see all the things. Like I don't see numbers. I just see a lifestyle and I have to sustain that lifestyle. Yes. When I listen to Kanye's music, he doesn't make music to listen to. On, you can listen to it in your headphones, but he makes music to the stadium. Like you want to be in the biggest place with the biggest speakers at the loudest volume so you can feel all the trouble and all the bass and hear the every note. That's what his music feels like it right. feels grand yeah like kanye so we went so i said he's the greatest artist you gotta understand before kanye comes in where rap was so before you even get to kendrick before you get to drake before you get to anybody you gotta see where rap rap really was and this is kind of like if we started at diplomats on back you know Hip hop was pretty dip set, dip set, it dip was set, dip set. Pretty rough, rugged. You had the Jewels. trap era, you had the Jeezy era, you had all that. You know, when you go to the 90s, you really got gangster rap. There were elements when you had party rap and hip hop are cool, cool spots, but you ain't really have it. Like when Kanye came, so Kanye coming into the game on out, <laughs> it has been different ever since he touched the game. So when Kanye comes in, and uh, so. This I'm just I'm, I'm breaking down his 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 discography in real time. He made 
He had an album called Yeezus, right? Right. And so if I looked at Kanye from going from the Old Testament to the New Testament, Kanye really would have been the transition from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Old music, old rappers, and that gangster man to the new rapper were all of a sudden, hey, Kanye paid for y'all sins and y'all could all be emotional rappers. And really, he does it as a producer, if y'all want to be honest. Is that sacrilegious? No, because when you go to, I mean, because you, you break, you give it an example. If you go to the <laughs> dynasty, so this is when you kind of hearing Kanye and you hearing Just Blaze, when you, especially when you get to Blue. Actually, Kanye changed the game just through production. What on happened Blueprint. to Just Blaze? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Kanye happened. <laughs> yeah, he ain't Kanye. He ain't Kanye. I mean, Just Blaze hard. Just Blaze got some stuff, but he ain't Kanye. Con Kanye is Kanye, and he did that to me, that style of production Was he better. the first one to have that ad lib? Just Blaze? Man, because before Matt, if, if you're on Metro, don't touch it. Hey, I'm just. You know what? I don't know if there was a producer that. I mean, producers did start. Damn, he might have been. I mean, uh, DJs do it. I hate it when I listen to a DJ talking all over a record. We hey, was, DJ, clue, we, clue, we clue. We was over there on the East Coast. I used to love going to get the mixtapes from the car shops and stuff because right. they had all the underground mixtapes right there. Yeah. And that's our, that's our first heard. Did you go to the one in Norfolk? Yeah. It was on a, like what was a that car street? shop or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh and so I heard the the first rough uh Kanye with it, it didn't have the I don't even know who the girl is but it had Lauren Hill on it the original joint it yeah, yeah. Selena Johnson came and did the because uh, yeah. they couldn't clear the joint yeah, yeah. because damn oh, Lauren Hill she got the worst work ethic in history <laughs> she yeah. she got the most she got so much talent just don't want to do the work I heard that one too dog listen I heard the beat to through the wire. I think I downloaded it on... I was already... A, listen, I was already a Kanye West fan because I was a fan of his production. So I was a Kanye West fan in high school. I, I don't know Kanye you, West in high school. So Paid in Full, on the Paid in Full album, Dame Dash, it was like the We the Best. And Dame Dash said, my producer raps, most, raps better than most of you rappers. And he said, Kanye. And that was the first time I heard Kanye just start really ripping. It was on the Paid in Full soundtrack. Dame Dash brought him in. And I was like, holy moly. Kanye, yeah. So, like, just the rap, the rapping the rapping took me by storm. Because, uh, again, I had always known Kanye to be a producer. But from college dropout, college dropout, it never, it never, it never went back. So, mayonnaise, color beans, I push miracle with. You don't get future. <laughs> you don't get Drake. You may not, it's arguable you may not get that Kid Wheezy. Cuddy. My other man, that that man on the moon, a kid Cudi was a very specific sound. What he brought to the game, that man on the moon one and two, man, it was very dynamic. I mean, those are some those day and night. Uh, 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 even uh, even uh, Lupe Fiasco, what he was able to do with lasers and stuff. They they were transcendent artists, and I think he was independent when he was doing what he was doing too. Lupe is a very underrated MC. I think Lupe Fiasco is a very, and I don't think his records get enough attention. Um, I think that Lupe, I, I, I'm a fan of Lupe Fiasco. You will I, always be what you started as, and you will always be kick push. And I don't think that resonates with black the black community. I don't, you know, kick push, kick push, and coast, especially and coming from Chicago. But but you know what? I think I think that he was. I think that Lupe was being himself. Like he's not he's not gonna give you this super street guy with with street credibility or whatever. Even though he's from a rough neighborhood and he's got some like you know, listen, bro. You, you think Jay Z is really this persona that he puts on? Man, the guy walks around pretending to be a gay artist. He wants to be Basquiat so bad. Uh, he buys all of his art. He dresses up in his attire. He wears his hair like him. May you marry to one of the most beautiful women. In the industry, and you aspire to be a a, a man that says, "Hey, uh, Jay Z, be Jay, hey." <laughs> and you know what, Jay Z? Okay, I'm saying this right now. My goat, my goat is Jay Z. Even though I say that Drake is the goat, Drake, because he just gonna go down as the goat. <laughs> Jay Z is my goat, man. Like, listen, dog. Jay, don't nobody got the consistency that Jay Z got. Don't nobody got the records that Jay Z got. Even though, yeah, man, walking around like Bosky out that's wild. And, and you know what? You have to be who you are, right? Like Kendrick Lamar cannot be super hyper tough gangster man because he's five foot five and he does not have the physical stature to be super <laughs> hard gangster man. 
it just doesn't fit the demeanor. But you know, Jay Z is a he's a taller fellow. You know what I'm saying? He's kind of stoic. Uh, he's not really emotional. His delivery and everything. When you say the authentic self, this is a, oh, it makes me cringe. We all get to be who we want to be. Yeah, we all yeah. do. You can design yourself. And there's some lazy people out here who ain't about nothing. They chose to be that, but they could choose to change their life, right? Right. <laughs> they could. And I, you know, I say that because I think Jay-Z could have a, a lesbian mother because he said, my mother, she pretended so long she's a thesbian. This is what he says in his raps. He had to promote the LGBTQ plus movement in his 404 album because he signed a contract with Beyonce so they can ascend to the heights of the power. So, uh, I want to talk about that so bad, but we didn't talk about that. We talk about music, just musically. I mean, hey, we that's music related. He, I mean, com- he compromised his music to appease a political agenda, and that just makes me feel weird about him. It makes all of his deals when he when he did the Sprint thing and and he had a million sold before the music ever played. It just felt like nasty. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something weird going on with that. But you know what? How, how are you platinum before anyone heard the music? Do we? Do we, man, you know, we, I hate, listen, as a fan of music, What's I up? hate talking about how I think they all have to take these oaths and they all have to kind of bend over to get where they are, especially to not be touched and to get out of certain situations. The Michael Jacksons, the Prince, I don't care who it is. Like, I honestly feel before these guys give you all this money, because what y'all have to understand is this, you do, there is a level of the game, even though I'm talking about hits and making hits. If you want access to certain things, you do have to give up something. You, like, if you want to get access to having them stadium shows and having that money, I, you, I, you have I, to give up something. I think the only thing that you have to give up, because once you get rich, you want to party. You want to party. The only compromise is hard work. If you choose to say that I'm just going to outwork everybody, can't nobody stop you. I think Kanye is showing us that. Right. If you just say, I don't care, I'm going to be egomaniacal, and I'm just going to go hard. I'm going to have so much music. I think Prince showed us that. He just said, man, I, I was watching a, a documentary and, and the woman said that he woke up and produced an entire song, artistry, instruments, everything, recording, composing, everything, a song a day for years. And so when you got that type of drive and work yeah. ethic, like, so when I look, at this, I look at this content thing, bro, aspirational, there's going to be a show a week. We just finna be putting out so much content, you're gonna be flooded with amazing content right. because the world is full of bullshit, people regurgitating information. And so when I look at artistry, there are very few artists who've been able to be as creative as Kanye West. <laughs> it, doesn't ex- it doesn't exist. And, and be consistent. And man, I thought that dude was going to have one of the flyest inaugurations in the history of the world. Man, he, he was going to perform at his own inauguration. No one man should have all this power. Is my beautiful dark twisted <clears throat> fantasy better than Thriller? Absolutely. <laughs> Michael Jackson would tell you that. Uh, you think so? What'd you say, Mike? Man, I don't you know. You co-signed that, Mike? Thank you, Mike. Now, listen. <laughs> Mike up there moonwalking on the angels. Sometimes you got a situation <laughs> where you have better artists, but not better albums. And I'll give you this. Everybody talks about Beyonce being the greatest woman entertainer artist. But does she have a control? And what I mean by that is, that's Janet Jackson. Does she have an album... Does she have the two albums that were produced by Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis for Janet Jackson? She's one of those people that makes me upset because I don't think that anyone would ever say that uh, Beyonce has the best voice they ever heard. I don't think anyone would ever say that. And so it's what, hard for what, what me. What woman to, artist what, has the best? Excuse me? What, what woman artist has the best vocals you feel? Oh, my goodness. There's a girl they call the songbird. Silly of me. To think that I... Minnie Ripperton. Man. Huh? Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, we could go. We could probably go like Tina Marie or somebody. Like that longevity matters, but when you hear it, you know you heard it. When you hear these people, you know you heard it, and and that's fantastic to me. I you can hear talent. I think Beyonce is an average singer who worked tremendously hard and was able to uh, capture pop culture because she has light skin and she's pretty. I think she 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 probably a, a good industry plant, and they paid a lot of money for her to take. look like her. <laughs> Yes. Man, when she's standing next to Kelly Rowland, she ain't even her. Ah, oh, that's a hot take. <laughs> hey, man, Beyonce can sing. 
I think Beyonce has a top. I, I would put Beyonce in top five vocalists. All they got to do is dim the lights on Kelly. You know what I'm saying? It comes with colorism in, in, in our community. You know, we look at Beyonce and she's like, we, that's the epitome of beauty because it's closer to European beauty standards. And you look at that chocolate skin, Kelly Rowland, like she looks like the, the girl next door, the mother of my children. Kelly, you too old for me, but like the younger you, shit. Uh, <laughs> shit. Hey, look. We definitely have colorism in music. We have colorism, period, in our community and society. We have Drake. That, 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 that's just. But see, she. Drake. Hey, Drake got the records. Jay Z. Drake, Drake got the records and Jay Z got the records. Favorite, man, I'll go back and listen to Jay Z's catalog and I'm not that impressed. I'm Uh, not that impressed. (laughs) I'm not that impressed. Who's better than Jay Z? Man, I go back to 22 twos and I like it. I like it a lot. You know, Jay Z is a rapping dude. Uh, like rapping who's a better rapper than jay-z to you kanye west <laughs> kanye west kanye west kanye west is like clever bars he don't have like triple entendres or anything like that but and i'm looking at i'm looking at the package okay like a com because kanye is a composer so i'm creating the melody in my mind and i'm putting the words to that melody and i'm bringing in the instruments that needs to be done hey most of i think most of jay-z's biggest hits were produced by kanye west yeah, but I'm talking about when I okay, so I'm just grading them just all straight rap, no production on the like just the better rapper. You believe you feel that the better rapper is Kanye West. It's a hard knock life for us. Steady. <laughs> we get kicks. It's a hard knock nah, life. Nah, this is hilarious. We gonna change clothes do, 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 do you- and pose. <laughs> uh uh, it's your boy. Do you think that <laughs> Black Thought? Do you think Kanye West raps better than Black Thought? The root? man, no, because he he's doing a thing, right? And the thing that Black Thought, I, I can't, I don't know if he can rhyme off the top of his head. It's a rhyme that he wrote five years ago, and he memorized that joint five years ago. I think he has probably one of those photographic memories where he could just go crazy, crazy bars, crazy bars. It's a specific thing. Hey, hey. These are exceptional people because you know music. It's a feeling, and they can rap so good. And I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> Man, Black Thought though, I I gotta say this. I've never heard Black Thought spit the same sixteen. Like I've never heard him. You you have rappers that will, they will pull from other raps or they'll say something similar or maybe sometimes the same thing. I've never heard that dude spit the same sixteen. Are you a common fan? <laughs> and if you're a common fan, what's like because. Unfortunately, hey, that, that's I like his music, but I had a little issue against Common. I didn't What's know. Up? I don't have any specific reason for not liking him. I just didn't like him. I like anytime somebody mentioned Common, any I just was like I would spit Common hate. I I really don't like actors. Like I really do appreciate the thing that you do, but once I know that you're an actor, then that tells me automatically that you're reading someone else's words. You could perform exceptionally well. And I'm like, man, you're a talented parrot, okay? Yeah, so congratulations. I had, a, I had an issue with Common, but I got over it. Once, you know, I felt like it was so much light skin hate in the world. I was like, you know what? Let me let me put away my hate for Common. What but that, Common, Common, hey, the corner? The B, the B album. Uh yeah, yeah. The B, uh, yeah, that's Kanye West. Kanye West. Like so many amazing projects were produced by Kanye West. He touched it, it just makes it amazing. And I think I think that's important. You know. I, what, as a as a as a media producer, you understand when you when behind the camera on the computer, you you understand. Hey, the artist just showed up for forty five minutes, maybe two hours, and I told you sing it like this, push that note out like this. Hey, I'm I'm gonna bring you back in. I'm gonna dial you in there, and then they go out there and they wave hello. We don't tell the truth about artists. A lot of artists are broke because you're just a talking head. You're just a tell ta- you know you're a talented parrot. You can, you can read words on a piece of paper. And music. <clears throat> is that wrong for me to say that? No. I want to pop the bubble for a lot of aspiring artists. As a musician, if you're going to get into this business independently, you have to be a businessman. You you make the money off making it your business. Your music is what gets everybody to pay attention to you. But the money is really going to come from merch and touring and the connectivity that you have with people. It's always worked like that music to think that. I'm going to make this hit. And this one thing that goes over the airwaves is going to make me a trillionaire. It's Prince, like, nah. Prince said, I had a, I built a studio in my home because the, 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 the music company said they own my music. And so I built a studio in my house. And then I recorded records. And they said they own my music. And I asked, 
You didn't write the music. You didn't build the studio. You didn't help me in any way. How is it yours? Because I signed a piece of paper that says that you own my intellectual property. I mean, this is the fight that we've been fighting with these companies. Doesn't he have a vault? Whatever happened to that, I got to get into the whole, he had a vault of music and so much music that, you know, I don't know. I think there's some issue with putting it out, probably, more than likely, if he's not, if he didn't sign it away to a record label. But I suppose he prints out a vault full I mean, of, like, music. Just that plight that <clears throat> these companies, if, if, if I don't pay to play, then I can make the most beautiful music, the most beautiful art that the world will never hear. <laughs> because if it ain't, man, Bobby Womack has one of the most beautiful songs in the history of the world. If it ain't commercial, if it ain't commercial, and in order to be commercial, you got to have a financial entity to push that thing. Bobby Womack is the most talented hoe-ass nigga on the planet. Holy Christ, bro. Goodness gracious. He was, Bobby Womack was a hoe-ass nigga. But he made great music. <laughs> hey, if, if he wasn't, do you think that he could sing with that type Probably of song? Probably not. Probably not. Artists have issues. All artists, all artists and personalities that y'all see in front of y'all, all of us, you know, we are extreme people. We have extreme personalities, and sometimes that just goes haywire in, in society. This ain't. This is not rap. But for my whole life, when Maxwell sang the song "Fortunate," and he was like, "I never sang a song with all my might." I've been waiting on the track when he sang the song with all his might because we ain't got nobody in, in our generation that blows like that. I think the closest thing is probably Anthony Hamilton and. That's not Bobby. Chris Brown? Huh? <laughs> Man. You don't think Chris Brown can sing? Chris he Brown can light sing. He's light-skinned and can dance. Uh, <laughs> he light-skinned and can dance, but the <laughs> thing with the lips like this, that's not what it is. Do you consider yourself that's light-skinned? That's not what it is. I, I be, I be, you know what, though? And for a light-skinned man myself, I do I do make a lot of light-skinned slander. And I say I'm really a dark man in the inside. But it's funny that you're saying that. I almost, I, almost, had to, almost got kicked out of prison for being, because I was sitting in the day room. And I was sitting there minding my business, watching TV, and, and, and I heard a voice say, look out, Red. And I, I ain't even turn around because I ain't never heard no Red before in my entire life. Say, look out, Red. <laughs> and I turned around, and it was the gayest man in the day room talking about look out, Red. He was, he was from Louisiana. I don't know where he was from, but he just had a lot of sass in the voice. You know what I'm saying? He had a lot of swang in his hip. And in prison, you gotta when a person talks to you and you don't like you got to square up, right? And so I was like, hey, man, don't call me no red. My bad, I ain't mean no offense. I'm just talking about your red skin. You know you got red skin. Ah, get out of here. I said, holy. <laughs> you asked me a question. I don't admit I ain't never thought about no light skin. My, I just, when they said the word black, I just, man, this is what I am. Facts. This is what I am. Nah, that's facts. <laughs> I hate sometimes when I'm saying stuff and somebody tells me like, oh, that's a real light skin thing to say. Because, again, you know, I don't look in the mirror and look at myself and say, I'm a light-skinned man. I say I'm a black man. But I do understand how people see, you know, your visuals and whatever. Hey, light-skinned, I'm telling you, if you want to be light-skinned, be light-skinned, kind of tall, and, and very non-political, non-threatening, and you can have a very prosperous career. That's true. Make a hard knock life, and you got a very prosperous career. Uh, Look like Basquiat, and you can represent the <laughs> NFL. Man, the people that we looked up to, to look at them now, it makes me angry, huh? Because you were supposed to be that guy. You ain't that guy, bro. You're, you're a puppet for political organizations, and you sell alcohol to our people. And I'm so sick and tired of Beyonce and all you individuals. All you do is give me liquor. I don't want your liquor. I just want to be the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. <laughs> the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.